everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Jollyville Radio and KJVR. I'm Julia Stonewash, and I'll be your host throughout today's episode. Jollyville Radio turns 40 today. Well, 40 episodes, that is, not years. <laughs> that would be crazy, but maybe one day. To celebrate, we have an exciting show for you. Today, we'll review the submissions for the new Jollyville Radio jingle, and KJVR intern Anderson Millingsley hosts his first live call-in show. On Community Beat, Tara Warren tells us about how her organization, Tenaciously Teal, gives love and support to those fighting cancer. I'll be right back after a quick break. Jollyville Radio sends a big congratulations to Jen Renner in Austin, Texas. You are the winner of Bingo for the week of May 19th, 2021. Thanks for being a fan and my veterinarian. To hear your name on Jollyville Radio, you can play along at any time with episode 208, The Bingo Episode. Go to jollyvilleproductions.com backslash bingo to request or download your free bingo card. That's jollyvilleproductions.com backslash bingo. Jollyville Bathworks has all your bathroom needs. Turning your bathroom into your own personal oasis retreat? We've got luxurious linens, fantastic fixtures, incomparable candles, spectacular scents, and more. Renovating that old, tired shower? We've got glass doors, tile, spray heads, and waterproof entertainment consoles. If you can imagine it in a bathroom, we've got it in stock today at our brand new 100,000 square foot outlet. You've even got that hard to find bubble blaster 5050 to zap the tenacious bubble bath residue that's been clogging up jacuzzis lately. Don't delay. Drop on by Jollyville Bathworks today, just off the Jollycoff Highway at the edge of town. You can't miss it. But if you see the duck, You've gone too far. Exclusive. Exclusive. Exemplar. Exemplar. Expensive. Expensive. Announcing the all new line of luxury five tined forks by the designer Robert Cheerful. always encourage people you know if they think you know it's just me what can I do that how can I really help um, I would just encourage people to do something um, anything because I truly never thought I would not only doing this full time but that we would have been able to make such an impact and help so many people and again that's not me that's my community and all the people who've come alongside us that have really helped us do that but you know if I had listened to my fears or my doubts or my anxiety about doing this there'd be a lot of people that wouldn't have the help they need and also a lot of people who would continue to feel like they're alone in their fight against cancer so um, you know one person can truly make a difference And so I think it's important that we all just try to do something to make the world a little better. Hello, this is Tara Warren from Tenaciously Teal. You're listening to Jollyville Radio on KJVR. Hello, listeners. This is Julia Stonewash again. And here with me in the studio is a special guest, Chauncey Applegate. Hi, folks. In honor of our 40th episode of Jollyville Radio, we decided it's time to get a jingle. Last week, we put a call out. We wanted to share the submissions, and the results were fabulous. It's nice to see so many people putting hard work and creativity into something that they love. This is our first time listening to these, so let's see what's inside. Hi, my name is Alistair. KJVR, KJVR, Jollyville Radio. KJVR, KJVR, Jollyville Radio. Listen to us, you will love it. KJVR. That was wonderful, Alistair. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, let's see who's next. This is Malia Thunder Sparkleston, and this is my jingle entry. Hey, JVR, Jollyville, Jollyville, hey, JVR. We bring you only the best that Jollyville has to offer through the radio waves. KJBR Jollyville, Jollyville, KJBR. I really like that one. I give it a four. Is that a four out of five or ten? <laughs> Absolutely. Next. Hello, I'm Dale Hopper, and I hope you like what I came up with. If you're looking for a community, ride the airwaves and join us here at Jollyville Radio. We bring you cats and spies and apple pies. Learn about the music and you can see it's Jollyville Radio for you and me. So many heartfelt options. I don't know. My heart's not feeling it. This is Grumpy Sue, and this is my jingle entry. KJVR, KJVR, Jollyville Radio. KJVR, KJVR, Jollyville Radio. Listen to us. You'll love it. Take it from Grumpy Sue. K. J B R. Maybe this was a waste of time. With an attitude like that, Julia, you would be correct. Hey, hey, Coolios. This is Detective S. Spicewood, P.I., with the new KJVR jingle. KJVR. Badoop Shadoop. Jollyville Radio. KJVR. Badoop shadoop, Jollyville Radio. Here's the scoop, but this is Badoop Shaboop. Jollyville Radio is yada da 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 here for you. Okay, I think that's all of them. Well, I don't know. Maybe we should just stick with what we have. Wait, Julia. There's one more. Let's play it. Hi. We're all Antonio and, and his imaginary, imaginary friends. friends. And you're listening to Jollyville Radio, KJVR. Whoa, that was really good. And I think the cheerful tone matches the creative intentions of our show. All right, listeners, be sure to follow us on Instagram or go to jollyvilleradio.com to vote for your favorite jingle. The winner will be announced in the next episode. I'm Kaya. I'm Josie. And you're listening to KJVR, Jollyville Radio. Coming to you live from the Purple Street studio of Jollyville Radio, KJVR, I'm Julia Stonewash. Well, folks, today Anderson Millingsley was supposed to lead an information call-in show. He isn't here, but he sent me a file via email and said it should work. So I guess I'll open that. Information powering on. Please say your name. Uh, Julia? Hello, Miss Julia. Are you Anderson Millingsley? He prefers just Anderson, but no, I'm an experimental general information chatbot implemented using some very new advanced algorithms. Anderson is developing them for his senior year computer science project and is generously allowing KJVR to use me in his place. Does that answer your question, Miss Julia? I think it does. I guess I'm just going to call you information then. And really, please don't call me Miss. My name is just Julia. I think I quite like it. No, seriously, like, don't call me Miss. Correction, I think I quite like it for myself. Please refer to me as Misinformation. Why don't we get started with the show? I hope that I'll be able to offer our listeners lots of artificially generated advice about anything they want to discuss. I hope so too. Uh, let's go to our first caller. Please tell us your name and give Misinformation your question. 
Hi, Miss Information. My name is Tony Greenbelt. I'm having trouble controlling the weeds in my lawn. Do you have any suggestions? Hello, Tony. Thank you for your question. I suggest that you get several goats. Goats really like to eat weeds. But I don't know anything about how to keep goats. And even if I did, my homeowners association has rules against keeping livestock, so I don't think that's a workable solution for me. Goats are a very environmentally friendly way to control weeds. I think you should petition your homeowner association to hire a roofing goat herd and trip of goats. Then everyone can benefit and you are also contributing to a sustainable economy. Uh, that sounds like it might take a long time to get going, not to mention take a lot of work. I was hoping for something a little more immediate. Nothing good happens without a little effort and patience, Tony. I think you should consider it. Well, uh, okay. I guess it's something to consider. Thanks for calling in with your question, Tony. Next caller, please give us your name and question. Uh, uh, hello, Julia. My name is Dale Hopper. I have a gardening problem for misinformation. I'd love to be of assistance, Dale. Please tell me your problem. I love the taste of super fresh carrots, so I work hard to grow my own. Lately, I've been having a problem with rabbits digging them up all before I get a chance to enjoy them. How can I control the rabbits? Well, Dale, trying to control something is usually much harder than finding a way to work with it cooperatively. You will probably be better off to just plant a lot more carrots so that there are enough to satisfy both you and the rabbits. Uh, well, won't that just attract more rabbits? Probably not, Dale. Rabbits are territorial so they don't relocate much. Also, they reproduce very slowly. So just plant a lot more carrots and you should be fine. You've got to be kidding me. Do you have any other questions for misinformation, Dale? Dale? Huh, I, I guess Dale hung up. Wait, are you making an outgoing call? Hello, Sean Palmer speaking. Hello, Sean. My records indicate you have slugs in your garden. Uh, yeah, actually, I do have a slug problem. Who's this? Misinformation. Artificial advice program. Slug problem. I can certainly help you out with that. You should plant lots of beans and cucumbers. Seems like slugs are really going for my tender young bean and cucumber plants. Thanks for confirming my solution, Sean. You should get lots and lots of slugs by planting beans and cucumbers. Huh? No, no I, of course, I don't want more slugs. I'm trying to get rid of them. Why on earth do you think I would want to have more slugs? Oh, I am sorry for misunderstanding you, Sean. All of my training for flora and fauna was generously undertaken pro bono by Mr. Harry Lechett. He has given me a profound appreciation for all plants and animals, so of course a slug problem most likely means not enough slugs. This, by far, is the craziest phone call I've gotten giving me terrible advice that I didn't even ask for in the first place. Alright, out of curiosity, how... Would I reduce the number of slugs? It is probably just easier to plant extra, so that there is enough of everything for the slugs and you too. Oh my gosh. Um, is there a human there? Just Julia is telling me to say no. Oh, Ju Julia's there? Oh, um, how, how's she doing? She never returned my call. Hi, hi, Sean. Yeah, uh, th this is Julia. Uh, we're trying out this new chatbot in the studio. I didn't, I didn't know it was going to call you. Oh, yeah, no, no worries, no problem. Um, are you still down to get that iced coffee sometime? Well, we are live on the air, and this is all the time we have for you. Bye-bye, Sean! Misinformation, was all that Harry Lachat stuff true? You might want to tell Anderson Millingsley to adjust your settings. Please, just Julia. He really insists on just Anderson. I'm sorry you are not satisfied with my advice. I will be sure to discuss it with Anderson at my next evaluation session. Thanks for listening, folks. That's all the time we have today for Misinformation. I'm Julia Stonewash. And I'm Misinformation. This is Jollyville Radio, KJVR. Jollyville Radio sends a shout out to Lake Placid, New York. Population 2,346. How y'all doing? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my little thing here. 
Hello, listeners, and welcome to Community Beat on Jollyville Radio. This is Bob Don from Bob's Short Story Hour and Hidden Oaks Podcasts, filling in for Uncle Asar. Today, we're talking with Tara Warren, founder of Tenaciously Teal, inspiring hope by providing love, community, and empowerment to cancer fighters in the midst of treatment. Tara, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. So how did you decide to start Tenaciously Teal? So uh, a lot of people ask me why tenaciously teal and people know what it means to be tenacious, to be strong, to fight, to not give up. Uh, But teal uh, is the ovarian cancer awareness color. And I was diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer in December of 2012. Oh, okay. And uh, the outlook was very grim and I was scheduled for surgery just a few weeks before Christmas. And I was in the hospital for over a week. And while I was there, I just saw so many patients who were by themselves uh, day after day as I'd walk these hospital halls. And um, my heart was just really burdened uh, for people who were in the fight for their life and then also alone. And I was just really um, propelled to do something. And so while I was there in the hospital, I started passing out my flower arrangements and dispersing those and just hearing people's stories. And I heard about um, just the struggles of they weren't they were worried about fighting cancer and and what that meant and the hardships that brought. But they were also worried about how they were going to afford the gas to get back and forth to treatment and just all of the additional expenses that comes with a cancer fight. And that was really a watershed moment for me as I heard these people's stories. I just felt like I had to do something. And so that was kind of the start. There was uh, just feeling like I had to do something. That's amazing. And like, I don't know if Michael planned this out when he asked me to, to talk to you today, but uh, a little bit about my background. Um, I'm cur- I currently work in like outpatient psychiatry. I'm a provider now, but but I I was a registered nurse in the hospital for years, like over a decade, and and I did work in oncology for a, a bit of that time. And it uh, I, I watched a few of your videos when I was trying to get to know a little bit about about tenaciously teal, and um, I was so touched, and I was really looking forward to chat with you about this. But because the 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 thing that you just brought up there about that that like battling with something that's really huge but then also like doing it alone on top of that it, it's oh man it, it just pulls at my heartstrings to to think about that because as a nurse like caring for people that's one of the first things that that comes to my mind like you want to be at somebody's side and, and work with them through that so like what you do has a really powerful you know place in my heart in in in, in the world it's just an amazing thing so thank you for that thank you um of course. Uh, what kinds of things specifically does Tenaciously Teal offer to people who are going through cancer treatment? Yeah. So when I started treatment, I was scheduled for 16 months of chemotherapy and I started going to treatment and recognized more of the same that I saw in the hospital, just people by themselves, just really, you could tell just burdened by uh, the physical and emotional turmoil that comes with the cancer fight. And I just started to think, what could I do that would be tangible help for these people? And that's when I recognized I was using the same items every day that were really assisting me in fighting cancer. So I had to have hand sanitizer because your immune system is suppressed. And I was drinking a lot of Gatorade because this weird phenomenon with chemo, it makes water taste like metal. It's awful. And so I was drinking Gatorade to stay hydrated. I drank a lot of green tea and needed chapstick and all these things. And so I started putting together and passing out care packs during my chemo. And after I finished, uh, you know, I kind of thought that was it. Uh, I had kind of done my part, if you will, or what I felt like I had done what I could while I was there and just really, again, thought about these people who are going to be alone and um, you know, if I didn't show up, who was going to show up for them? And I didn't know that answer to that question. So I kept coming back to the chemo room and pretty soon other hospitals in Oklahoma city, you know, were calling and wanting these care packs that we had, you know, been passing out. And we just kind of 
one hospital after another. And uh, pre COVID, we were going to almost 20 hospitals on a monthly basis, just distributing these care packs in the chemo room. And um, now we still pass those out. Obviously, we just can't physically go into the hospitals, um, but we do mail a ton of care packs. Um, so we've uh, mailed almost 10,000 care packs at this point since wow. 2014 from our little office in Oklahoma City. Uh, it's free to request one on our website. And so uh, men, women, kids, uh, family get on there, request it for themselves or uh, for someone else. And we send those out nationwide. Um, and we also have a financial assistance program uh, for Oklahomans fighting cancer. I wish we could help everybody, but um, just as a small grassroots organization, our board of directors felt like for now, we've limited it to people across the state and um, we help with gas and grocery cards, but we also have what's called a board designated fund. So it's essentially a grant program for uh, the unmet needs of cancer fighters. So we've purchased things like a fridge because someone didn't have a fridge and they needed to be able to keep um, fresh food and even have cold and sure, which is a big deal for this person. Uh, we've bought a washer and dryer. We've treated homes for bed bugs because uh, people weren't allowed to come back to the treatment center. They literally couldn't access treatment because they had this infestation in their home. And there's not a lot of organizations that will help with that kind of need. Uh, but we right. really pride ourselves on being that for people uh, meeting those unmet needs. That's so awesome. Um I have a I have a little bit of a weird question. Uh, when you guys were starting out, it kind of sounds like you were almost surprised by other hospitals finding out about the services that you made. Like, was that just word of mouth? People people saying, "Hey, these guys are doing some great work," and it just spread to these other hospitals. Yes, it, it's been really organic. I mean, even when I finished treatment, I went back to my full time job. I worked for the state as a social worker in child welfare. And so I went back full time, but was kind of doing this on the side. And uh, it just kind of happened. <laughs> and it, in some ways, it feels like overnight. Other ways, it's like, well, seven years later, you know, but I still am surprised of how much it's grown in that seven years and in the word of mouth that's, um, you know, propelled it forward for sure. That's really incredible and impressive. Um, how would you describe the way that community factors into cancer treatment and the work that you guys do? So we really love that we are able to get the community so involved in helping uh, with our mission. Uh, so we regularly host care pack parties uh, at churches, schools, businesses where people can put together care packs. They host drives to collect the items that we put inside the care packs. They help us mail them by, you know, putting on shipping labels and packing them up. Uh, we also put a handwritten note from an adult or child in every single care pack that we distribute. And so we get a lot of help from the community, even other nonprofit organizations. There's an awesome local organization called Wings, and they help adults with developmental disabilities. And so they write a lot of notes for us. And cool. so um, it's really cool. We couldn't do it without the help from our community. Uh, we're, I joke that we're kind of a one man show in the sense that I'm the director, but I'm also the janitor and social media manager. <laughs> and so <laughs> I definitely couldn't distribute, you know, some anywhere from 300 to 500 care packs a month without the help from our community. That's incredible. Yeah. I mean, that's like, yeah, that's like 10, at least 10 a day, right? I mean, that's, that's a lot of work. Uh, you wear a lot of hats too. <laughs> um, through all of this work that, that you guys have done, are there any stories that, that stand out to you that you'd like to share? Yeah, there's, um, quite a few, you know, um, one specifically, I remember going to a treatment center and I kind of saw this guy just staring us down when we were distributing care packs. And you could just tell he seemed like really sad and 
unhappy, if you will. And uh, when I gave him the care pack, he, I think literally just kind of grunted at me. <laughs> it was, um, you know, it, it just kind of was an uncomfortable situation, honestly, at first. And I went away when I came back, he had this note out and it was written by a little kid and it said something to the, you know, essentially, I don't know you, but I care about you. Stay strong, keep fighting. And as I'm looking at this guy, he has tears just rolling down his face. And he's like, this is literally the first gift I've gotten. And I can't remember how long. And oh, man. it just really impacted me uh, for sure. You know, that of course this guy was a little unhappy. He didn't have a community to support him and love on him. And this little simple gift that cost around $12, honestly, impacted him that much that it just, you know, really touched his heart. So. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Did, did you have another story? I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no. Um, you know, we do get a lot of notes and stuff. Thank you notes that just those are the things that really like keep you going and fighting and yeah. Um, fundraising and, and working hard to continue the mission. And this lady said she saw the this little teal bag, you know, that had showed up in the mail and it was on her doorstep and she immediately thought it was for her neighbor. She's like, this couldn't be for me. And in the note, she says, I'm 66 years old and my husband's passed away and I found myself alone because all my family has passed away. And all of a sudden I get this bag and it's for me and it's all these things that I can use and will use. But more than that, it meant so much that there was somebody still out in the world that cared about her that didn't mm -hmm. even know her. And, um, yeah, I just think that's awesome. That's why we do it is to let people know that, yeah, we don't know you, but we do kind of know, um, how you feel. And, um, we know you can use this, but more than that, like we love you because you're another human, you know, I just feel yeah. like that's my call and all of our, you know, um, it's important for all of us to show love and kindness because the world is, it's a harsh place and um, you just really never know what somebody's going through as they say. That's absolutely right. You know, and you really summed it up well too, when you told the story about the guy who just had this kind of edge to him, he's a little curmudgeonly, like you never, you never really know another person's perspective and, and kindness is never the wrong answer. Right. Right. Did I say that right? Yeah. Yes. It's always the right answer. I'll say it like that. <laughs> kindness is always the right answer. Yes. Where can our listeners learn more about Tenaciously Teal? So if they want to go to our website, at, it's tteal, T-T-E-A-L dot org. Or you can find us on Facebook at Tenaciously Teal or Instagram or Twitter at tteal underscore e. This has been Jollyville Community Beat. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, we're all superheroes and our power is kindness. The creative team behind these episodes of Jollyville Radio includes Uncle Asara Cablon, Emily Ansnick, that's me, Michael Crosa, Michelle Darcy, Jamie Davis, Brian Green, Alan Kay, Pilar Kep, Robert Leary, Thomas Schlitt, Michael Stanley, Matt Waite, K. Wise Denty, Elijah York. Special thanks to Bob Dawn of the Bob Short Story Hour and Hidden Oaks Podcast, John C. Cook, host of the podcast Fado, Abby Brinker and Alan Kadan, hosts of the Lunatics Radio Hour Podcast, Antonio Delgado of the band O Antonio and his imaginary friends. Lead editing by Dr. Monse Santian, with social media help by Emily Antonin. Direction and music by Michael Crosa. The recording was made in accordance with social distancing. Jollyville Radio is a product of Jollyville Brass Quintet, member of Austin Creative Alliance. We are based in Austin, Texas. If you enjoy Jollyville Radio, consider supporting us on Patreon. For a small monthly pledge, 
you'll have a big impact on the show. Please, plus, <laughs> please, please give us your money. <laughs> Plus, depending on your pledge, you can get bonuses like access to the script archives, letters from characters, and even a chance to hear your own voice on the show. Just go to patreon.com and search for Jolly Real Radio. The credits were read by the writers of episodes 218 through 221. They are Uncle Asar Kebulon, Emily Antonick, Michael Krosa, Brian Green, Pilar Kep, and KY's Denti. We'll see you next time on Jollyville Radio.